Hi, welcome to the next episode of Rhythm Heeras. Today we have Atman with us, who is uh, currently residing in Brisbane. Um, he is a bit of a wandering, heart-centered musician who has traveled and lived in numerous countries, and he started his journey into music in his uh, sometime around in his twenties. So we've had an exciting, interesting conversation. He's been extremely generous in sharing his profound experiences that he's had with sound, vibration, uh, what healing with sound uh, looks like versus what uh, healing with sound is made to look like today. Um, we are also going to pass some new age spiritual aspects of how sound is perceived. So. Uh, enjoy the episode we will start with uh, one of his tracks called om to cleanse our system and get right into the conversation thank you for watching and choosing to be here today Thank you for uh, being a part of this. It's really exciting for me to um, bring together artists like you who are, uh, you know, exploring these different aspects of drumming and rhythm and what music and healing can do. And mm. as much as I am more curious to know about it and get deeper understanding, I think it's interesting for uh, people to start looking at it from a different perspective as well. Instead mm -hmm. of just uh, as a form of entertainment that they can consume, 
right? the best way. Like, yeah. You came from a good angle. Mm -hmm. Like people think music is entertainment, is a hobby, you know? Like I studied engineering, for example. Right. And my background is engineer, and I was never encouraged to be a musician. Like even when I was in primary school, like I was seen as very intelligent boy and my teachers inspired me to be a professor, mathematician, engineer, doctor. And they told me, oh, you don't have creative skills, don't go there. Yeah. You know? And even family and the environment, I come from Turkey. So the mentality there is like, if you go into arts, creativity, music and so, you will be a poor man. And then you will be a hippie or mm. something. And they they think it is very unintelligent thing. You know, they think stupid people become musicians. <laughs> you know, if you don't have a brain, uh, you become musician or an artist. But you know what? Like after studying engineering, and I study engineering in Germany, yeah. very tough. You know, like it was a very tough study. It took a long time, and many people just dropped the course because it was so tough. And I finished. And at the same time, I was learning drums, you know, percussion and so on. The, the more I went deeper into percussion and rhythm, I realized it is more difficult than engineering. And it requires more intelligence. And then I realized like rhythm, especially like Indian rhythms, you know. Uh, I got into Indian rhythms like three, four years ago. I realized it's so high intelligence, you know, to get there and to be focused on these complex rhythms, polyrhythms, like different time signatures and so on. And at the same time, counting the bars and at the same time listening to other musicians and being aware of your audience, being not distracted and so on. Like I said, like, this is very tough thing. It's very high intelligence, mm -hmm. but people don't know that. Like they don't think like music is very high intelligent thing. But I realized even I had been meditating for a long time too. But at the end, music became my meditation because I realized it's a very high form of meditation as well if you do it properly. Because it requires you to be present all the time. Mm. When you miss the presence, the music rhythm down. You know? So do you think engineering helped your music? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but maybe because your brain was already wired for uh, something tough and challenging probably like i like mathematics but the older i get i lose my interest in mathematics hmm. uh, i was very interested in mathematics when i was younger even like i wanted to be a mathematics teacher and so on and then i realized rhythm is mathematics too yes like rhythm especially rhythm you know uh like rhythm has very interesting mathematics like counting and then like doing different patterns and then subdivisions you gain go into polyrhythms like different like mathematics there you know yes. and it's also a nice part of it i don't want to say it's analytical but numer numerical you know like rhythm is numerical and i like numbers i think maybe there is this connection yeah because i like numbers Maybe this is why also I get into the rhythm so right. deeply. Melody, melody don't have so much numbers, but rhythm much more for me, like really about numbers. And I probably like it, you know, I can say. That's one of the attributes of uh, rhythm and drumming, especially in the Indian classical format that intimidates mm -hmm. people to take up drumming or learn rhythm because, you know, it's so complex and you have to know Very the numbers and yeah. Like you said, it's numerical. So someone like me will go bonkers if they had to learn drumming. So that's why we take the easy uh, way out for these situations. The uh, easy way, actually, like what people do, like they play popular music, you know? Popular music has very simple rhythms. You know? Like mm. I played such music as well, you know? But it's, to be honest, becomes very boring after a while. And it's not challenging. and. I don't want to look spare, as a superior to a music culture, but I feel like Western culture miss, you know, the depth of rhythm. Like they don't have this depth, depth of rhythm, 
and then this is why in this is my opinion this is why they created harmony and everything like their rhythms are usually four four their subdivisions usually just up to four and they don't use this conical technique that you right. use in indie you know they are using much easier things and easier rhythms and so on but like once you get into like i am from turkey like also like turkish balkan middle eastern rhythms a bit more difficult than the western but when i get into indian i realized it is the top level <laughs> you know and this is why maybe people are intimidated to, to get there you know it's very mathematical like you need to so much be aware like i was watching videos of uh, this conical masters you know and still i am intrigued still i am confused like who is this person i forgot the name like uh, uh, bj manjurat bc think, manjurat like, yeah he's crazy yeah. yeah yeah he's crazy i know um, and also like tabla masters like zakir hussein and so on yeah. like, i listen to them and all these crazy things even like western musicians like they also use now conical like on True. drum kit and so on even when i listen to them i see like there are very interesting things and still i need time to digest you know mm. <laughs> Yeah. But any, this is yeah. yeah. Any drummer from any other country who is trying to diversify definitely has some influence from the Indian uh, classical rhythm patterns. So because they finally find their way to Indian rhythms, and then they you know incorporate and enhance the overall quality of their uh, music and what they are producing. So because it's very deep, you know. Like as I shared, like Western music didn't discover this depth of rhythm. They just stay with four, four, four subdivisions, like much more main beats. Jazz music is going a bit deeper, hmm. uh, but when I come to Indian music, I realize it's top level. Yeah. Not like uh, Punjabi music or Bollywood music. <laughs> no, 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 of course, yeah. But I mean, like Indian classic music, you know, like there's so much to it, like so much to it, uh, so much to it, yeah. and I I realize I am very beginner. For that. Even it's, the it's masters quite... feel that they are beginners. That's how yeah, vast it is. <laughs> I know. Like I went to a percussion camp in Egypt. I have a master from Turkey, and he had a percussion camp in Egypt because he lived in Egypt many years, and he was inspired by. Sinai Desert there. and he also tells like he's still a student and he's also using Indian uh, mm. techniques you know but he didn't mention that I realized after some time you know he's using verbalization conical but in different way like the technique he invented is actually inspired by Miridanga you mm. know yeah yeah like I think when musicians go deeper, more advanced level, they come to a point like they stagnate and then they look for challenges, you know, and then they go into different traditions like Middle Eastern, Balkan, mm. Indian, you know, and I realize Indian is very challenging. This is why I get there more. And there is a spiritual aspect to it as well. I mean, yes. when that seeking begins in their own music journey i think they end up landing in more deep rooted traditions and uh, cultures who have uh, presented this to the world sure sure it is very connected i can share something with you which is very interesting yeah when i moved to australia three years ago uh, in that time i was seeking musically and so spiritually so and both were deep search, you know. And I went to a festival. It was a very life-changing festival. Like there I experienced first time the start of ego death, you know. Like I realized I don't exist and such a big ego I have. And even spiritual ego so big, you know. And that was beginning of the end. <laughs> I will say the end of the personal identity. And at the same time in that festival i experienced first time in my life you know in india you call it la la like rhythm like this le, universal le, rhythm. yes le, no? and because i had a friend from pakistan he's plays tabla and so on 
he told me this is a blessing that you got it like i could catch the first speed like this awakening you know and i call it rhythmic awakening you know musical awakening like kind of a blessing it happens to you and it's also very spiritual thing you know because it happens you don't achieve it or something you know you understand what i mean it's very I interesting think, thing. yes i do i mean it's i've never heard someone put it this way i mean it, okay it, it's like i can really say there is something called musical rhythmical awakening you know uh-huh. there's people in india refer to spiritual awakening it happened to me but i cannot describe it it's like quantum leap something happens and then your all musical rhythmical and also spiritual journey shifts you know and then you are so much embodying the rhythm music and then spirituality music rhythm all become one you know it happened to me yeah and then since then everything changed you know like i could catch rhythm so easily and the rhythm start to grow within me so much and even the meditation start to evolve in the way of music for me you know and this is something very beautiful and i had also a, a guy who was uh, kind of guiding me on spiritual path and he when he told me like my spiritual way is music and my satsang you know is music he said and then the deeper i went i realized it and now in my life i can say the music is top priority but as you say it's not entertainment and i don't like when people are using it for entertainment like i am giving uh, workshops and i started just a rhythm project here in australia called pulse and i told people look the first thing we need to do cult- to cultivate this musical awareness this like listening to music consciously you know because it's everything starts with listening uh, people listen to music as if they listen to chinese japanese any language they don't know right when we listen to a language we don't know it's just for us an entertainment right. and but when we start to learn about this language when we start to listen consciously then it becomes joyful and then it doesn't become entertainment tool anymore it is much more like something to expand something to grow something to go deeper and this is what i try to cultivate in my students you know i am teaching them how to listen to music how to listen to rhythm like how to understand it you know how to consciously listen to it you know and i think everything starts with this listening do you think because the kind of music that uh, the majority of the world is consuming is lyrical do you think that creates a barrier the lyrical, you know what like i am a kind of person who is guided by intuition now when you told me lyrics something came up through intuition what i felt is like this uh, example i use all the time western music is very sensual it has a lot of lyrics right and the lyrics are even sensual you know and much more like superficial too the middle eastern music goes deeper on emotional level like they are so emotional but also sad a bit you know there is some kind of sadness there and yeah, okay. like going deeper it can really touch you and make you cry and it makes me cry most of the time and i realize indian music is going a bit deeper it goes spiritual level you know like when you listen to it you really feel like sometimes like you are one with universe and like this different dimension is opening up you know and then you can feel joy sometimes you can feel oneness sometimes like i can really see in music these different dimensions happen but it's just generalization actually even in western music you can feel spiritual aspects it depends on the musician and how they make it you know is i think everything starts with intention like why a musician is creating the music you know because we are uh, creating we are the creator like when i make music i always have this intention i want to touch people's hearts by my music but not to impress them not to attract them to plant a seed that they can grow in presence that they can become fully conscious in this life you know? my music is kind of maybe 
how can I say, a spiritual tool, I would mm. say, you know, like I am touching them by this music because it's also energy, you know, I am creating this intention. And when people listen to it, maybe unconsciously, unknowingly, they are touched. And then after maybe some time, something can happen. You know? And I know in India, like gurus do such methods, you know, they create energy and so on. And I'm using music in that way, you know, like to bring back people to their presence, you know, drop their mind and just connect to heart. It can be used in that way easily because it is a message from universe, you know, it's for me, music is language of God, language of existence. Like it's very difficult to express, articulate emotions and then all these mystical dimensions also through words, so difficult. Sometimes poems can do that because they are beyond actually uh, language, I would say. They still use the language, but still you can feel by poems. But I think music is the next level. Like through music, we can really feel and receive the messages we cannot receive by language and this is why i am using it too like if i write a book or give a talk it's more difficult but by music because i'm also getting so present when i play i get in tune and this energy is created around and then it can touch me it's my intention with my music you know not for entertainment or something. Yeah, I think every every human has experienced, uh, you know, some or the other mysteries of life, which they probably can't describe in words. And that's yeah. when any kind of an art form comes in. Because yes. then they use that language, which is beyond words and not restricted to our verbal language uh, to express it and to connect with others. And sound and music has always, you know, been integral in that sense. Uh, no matter on which level a person is consuming music, they know, they understand that on some level music heals, right? So, but we don't know what is the background functioning of it. What, uh, what is it really doing to our physical body or the energetic aspect of us? So, uh, I think it would be a great uh, topic for us to uh, you know dive into especially uh, you are someone who is not using uh, music for simply entertainment purpose and you want to connect with others and uh, you know plant seeds whether on a conscious level or on an unconscious level to expand their awareness so uh, so we understand that music uh, and sound has that um, healing aspect or rather it can be used as a tool for uh, self healing uh, if not, uh, you know, get healed by someone else in a very uh, literal uh, terms. So, uh, I think I would like to understand from you um, what really happens in the space of sound healing and what uh, and how does sound create that possibility of, you know, touching you in ways that are even unconscious and how do you plant those seeds in another person through music? I will share different aspects. First of all, I will share myself as a receiver. In my life, I had very deep, like transcendental transformational processes, you know, like very mystical dimensions open up. And most of them open through music. Like, I listen to a music and it's the right time, shifts happens. Or I burst into tears, which I couldn't do normally. You know? And all goosebumps come and amazing realizations happen. Also. Music is gateway for me. Like it always helped me, even when I was young, you know, like I, I had been listening to music all my life. Like it is a great tool like for transformation is a great tool like it can really touch so deeply like 
nothing in my life touched me so deeply, you know, as music touched. And as I experienced it, then I realized it can be given too. And I think it's about, again, intuition. I know in this day and age, Mm-hmm. Especially in Western countries, I don't know about India. There are so many sound healers. Someone buys a singing bowl or didgeridoo or something, they become sound healer. For me, sound healing is not apart from music. Music is sound healing. You don't need to be sound healer. Like for me, there is no sound healer, but who is not a musician. For me, sound healer is a musician. Like let me put it in a way. A musician can be a sound healer hmm. if he has the right intention and the right, how can I say, the focus, you know? Like, really, it's with right intention. If he has the right intention, if he, has, if he can hold the space, if he can really create this energy around, he can be a sound healer very easily because it's really about music. A sound healer is not necessarily a musician, mm. you know, because they just use these tools. Maybe they can call them healers, you know. And in my case, like I use didgeridoo for sound healing most of the time. And why, it, you can ask why are you using didgeridoo? Uh, when I came to Australia first time, like six years ago, I felt deep connection and call towards Tichiruto. And it was really a, like a spiritual call, I think. Like I felt so connected because I was also feeling this call to meet Aboriginal communities. But I realized in Australia, unfortunately, Aboriginal communities always wiped out. Mm. You know? And we don't know it overseas. You know, we think like ah, in Australia there are so many Aboriginals. No, they are wiped out by white people. And I start to realize it after I, I lived here for a while. But the desire was still there. I wanted to connect with this culture. And, but I felt the call towards the Jirudu. And then I got the Jirudu and I started to learn by myself. Believe it or not, like I learned drums in so many years. Like it took me so many years and I got teachers, masters and so on. But with the Jirudu, I didn't have a teacher. Just like I had good friends who were really good digital players, they sh- shared with me some secrets, some insights. But then by myself, like I learned it. And I don't practice it much, you know. I think it's a gift, you know, like like circular breathing, all these different sounds happened. And I really feel digiridu is for me an art of sound healing when I play. It is again intuition. You know, like life is calling into this direction. I am also using it for my music. But when I use the journey, it's mainly for sound healing. And when I play it for people, again, I connect to intuition. Like once I remember, I was doing like sound healing around people. I saw the image of eight. You know, eight means infinity. Infinity. And I start to draw eight around people eight times. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And then they asked me, like, you were drawing something. I said, yes. I felt this intuition to draw eight around everyone eight times. And everybody felt good. You know, they had really great experience. So I can say it's really about surrendering again. You know, like surrendering to heart, surrendering to universe that whatever you want to call so and then it talks towards you in sound healing like i cannot say i am doing sound healing who am i you know it's it happens so i just let it be and i feel like it happens through this beautiful instrument did you do and also when i play drums when i play my darbuka darbuka is my main percussion instrument it's from middle east also, I feel like when I give this intention, you know, when I create this intention, like I want to play now from my heart and then I will give it to people, this energy. Yes, then it happens too. 
I realize everything starts with intention. Like intention in life is the most purest thing. And I will give you a very interesting side note. You know, in Turkey, the religion is Islam. And in Islam, intention is always the key, you know. They say you need to start everything with intention, every prayer, every ritual. Without intention, your ritual or prayer will not be accepted, they say. So really, I, I can see in life, and music is part of life, intention creates all this healing. If there is right intention, but with intention, sometimes maybe people don't understand because they create intention throughout their mind. But I can say intention is not created through mind, it's created through heart. It's like we need to connect to the heart and connecting the heart means we just let go, surrender. We don't have any agenda behind, you know, just like we are just a slave of God or universe, consciousness, whatever, you know. And then it happens. Then it's good intention. Because then life is just using us, you know, in that way. It happens, I think. This is why I think there is no healer, to be honest. There is no sound healer. Just they are delivering it. You know, they are maybe just lucky people. <laughs> you know, that they, they are the, this channel, you know. Yeah. I see in that way. So the people who are consuming, does it have the same impact if they are uh, taking the sound in actively or passively? You mean the participant? Yes. Like for example, like, let, uh, let's say you have set of five people and two of them have, have intentionally come to you, let's say something is troubling them or you know, there is some mm. kind of a suffering that they feel they might alleviate by being in your presence yeah. versus someone who's just you know tagged along with them to see oh let's see what we can experience you know so yeah. what so the reason i'm asking this question is i really want to simplify and describe sound healings to to be able to make anyone understand what this the entire concept is not someone who knows music or not someone who understands sound healing, yeah. but anyone, anyone who you know stumbles across uh, this particular footage should be able to take back, key, oh, this is what they meant. Like this is what it does to our being, whether it's physical, emotional, or mental. So I'm really, I'm going to try and break it down to simple, simple questions and you know <laughs> dive into your heart and soul and bring out answers the best that you can give us. My answer will be very, Contradictory. <laughs> it always is. I would say just mind asks this question and just mind wanna know yeah. what is sound healing is. And I say people, just surrender, let go. Just receive what is given here. And when people come to my events, you know, most of the time, sometimes I don't do it, but most of the time I tell, please. Put all your expectations, assumptions, prejudices, opinions aside. Drop your mind. Just be receptive what is given here. Just be open. That's it. You know, just be open. Don't have any barrier. Just be open. Because the rest happens naturally. Like everything in life is about receiving, you know. Somebody is having this pure intention you know, and then delivers this healing through vibration of music. But if we are resisting, nobody will receive it. It will just bounce back, you know. So it's really about also receptivity. And I think this is the one of the most important things. This is why I tell people, you need to be receptive. If you come to sound healing or wherever, you know, even a, a gig, a concert, you know, be receptive. And if somebody asks me what sound healing is, I will say, in a simple form, is receiving sound, receiving these healing properties of music. You know, it's about receiving. You just receive it. You know, 
because again there, there, there is intention behind this uh, vibration like which i am creating you know it comes from the, that space of intention but if there is no receptivity there there will be no healing so it is kind of really like this communication you know it's also you can think like in f- uh, physical terms like there is one transmitter one receiver from my engineering background right <laughs> You know, sure. like so I have this pure intention. I am transmitting it. I am giving it through my instrument. You know, through music, but they need to just receive. That's it. And this is sound healing, because healing is a- everywhere. You know, like it. It is not a fancy thing. Like when people say sound healing, you know, when someone doesn't know, maybe I can also say what sound what sound healing is not. Mm. You know. Sound healing is not a fancy thing. Sound healing is not about going to uh, have an ast- astral travel. It's not about seeing chakras. It's not about seeing your past lives. It's not about uh, awakening. It's not about uh, maybe any- anything. You know, it, it, there is not nothing fancy there. Like it is just receiving. But these things can happen. It doesn't mean that it wouldn't happen. Anything can happen. I don't know. I really don't know. But you don't go with such set expectations. No. Even like I've been to some sound healings, you know, and I realized, wow, some of them were very psychedelic. I went into very psychedelic dimensions, you know, but I had no expectation because I was also doing sound healing. But till my part, I was also receiving it, you know. So it's really about receptivity, you know, nothing else. And it's a very simple thing, actually. But it's really two things are important. The pure intention of the musician and the receptivity of the audience. I love how you just pointed out what sound healing is not. Because today in the overall mainstream, when you look up sound healing, that's exactly what sound healing is all about that's how it has become that's how it's being projected and that's why we are doing this whole series to bring out yeah. different perspectives and even entire entire spirituality became like that you know inter- entire spirituality became like seeing chakras and then going into all these different dimensions and then like seeing past lives karmas like all these fancy things and you know what and uh, it exists everywhere in Western world, in Indian world. You know, I realized even gurus use all these fancy words. You know, yeah. but at the end, I realized that was my personal shift. You can call it awakening, whatever you want. I don't want to call anything. You know, uh, and I read a guy from India. He was called UG Krishnamurti, not G. Another okay. G. And he's snapping all these spiritual concepts. You know, mm. he says like there is no awakening, there is no karma, nothing. And I realized, yeah, all this concept, you know, everything is concept, you know, yeah. and all our fancy concepts, like there are experiences for sure, but we want to label these experiences, you know, we call them out, oh, this is past life, this is karma, this is that, this is this, you know, and I know in all these spiritual circles, people want to also do business, you know, <laughs> they want to sell, you know, they want to sell like, oh, come to my sound healing, come to my satsang, come to my yoga retreat, you know, and they are using all these fancy words. And then people expect too much, you know. And you know what? This is why it is uh, detrimental. Then people have so many expectations. And then they go there, nothing happens. They feel like, ah, something's wrong with me. And I say, no, don't expect anything. I say, don't expect anything. No expectations, please. You know, put all expectations aside. Nothing fancy happens here. (laughs) Just receive. That's it. Whatever you receive is is yours. It's not mine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> take it for yourself and don't uh, mystify it please. yeah you have to allow what's coming through for you in that moment instead of exactly. what you want it's, for it to happen because it is right for you it's meant to be for you you know and this is the beauty of life like we are individuals in this life we are connected in this big ocean of life but yet we are also individuals and in that moment maybe you were meant to be there and then you mean to receive this experience, you know, and then maybe it will be a life changing experience for you. But maybe for someone else, it will be a very boring experience. Yeah. Maybe it's not right space, you know. So this is why 
I don't want to get into concepts too much. Like when people ask me what sound healing is, maybe better to say what sound healing is not. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That helps, and that clarifies, way. yeah. Yeah, because it also helps people. Like negation, it really helps, you know. Like Buddha used this uh, method as well. He said like no soul, no awakening, nothing, nothingness. You know? Because when we negate everything, our mind really dies, you know. Because mind want to have always these fancy worlds around us. Want to be in the fifth dimension. Want to meet all these astral beings. Want to go to past lives, you know, experience chakras, seeing colors. You know? <laughs> They're for me all fancy things. Yeah. So from mainstream entertainment to spiritual entertainment. It's like a exactly. pendulum swing that exactly. happens. Yeah. Exactly. You summarize it very well. And it, it is unfortunately there and people are entrapped in that way. Yeah. And I see like many sound healers also use sure. this <laughs> trap, you know. I, it, I mean, I, I probably see that as a phase also because sometimes when it's new and exciting, when you yourself are opening these different doors, you can get caught up till you actually get a hang or depth and realize like how you have come to a realization that you are not the healer. You know, it's what yeah. coming through you. Maybe it'll take that much time for them to get to that point where they also realize that this is something probably beyond them. And um, but you know, heart never lies. Mm. Once you connect to the heart, you can also see through people. Like when I connect to people, I cannot say hundred percent, but most of the time, I can feel their intention too. Mm. Then I can see if they are really having this pure intention of, or not. And unfortunately, like I haven't been to India, I don't know. But in Western world, I realize most of the healers are not coming from this very pure state. There are some really like very pure healers and they are coming from this very beautiful space. I realize them and they are very beautiful people. But I mean the majority. Mm. Majority of people are really caught up this spiritual entertainment, you say, and spiritual ego, spiritual identities. You know, this is why I am not engaging with such events much. You know, like I don't go to events much and I don't want to be part of it much. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where uh, these conversations help to give, uh, you know, a different perspective on what more there is out there because for someone who had a lot of hopes and then they don't experience anything they start you know negating the whole experience and then exactly. they, they create a community saying that this doesn't work you know maybe something else will work but then they lost the essence of the overall properties that they had uh, gone for in the first place uh, but having like you said uh, that for some people these experiences can also be boring and i have witnessed people who would say you know i, I when I go to such events, I just fall asleep or That's fine. yeah, or, uh, you know, it's just, I don't understand what's happening or, uh, or some might just have a completely profound shift as well. And this is something that I firsthand uh, seen people experience. So, which makes me sometimes wonder because there is this vibration that's being emitted through sound. Can a person cultivate that kind of a sensitivity towards being more receptive and more absorbing of those vibrations yes i can give an example from myself because we can only talk about ourselves yes. actually. i will give you a very interesting example like i used to do uber driving mm -hmm. and one night uh, i had three young girls and they wanted to play their music as i am very sensitive about music and i know like it's very deeply touching me and it's sometimes really uplifting me and healing me but it can also poison me i know and i said like, look I, I don't play other people's music in my car they start to play on their phone very loudly mm -hmm. you know what i felt poison and i have sometimes like shatterings in my body like my body moves all this like energy moves you know i felt so much poisoned blocked and I felt like uh, my body want to vomit. It was very poisonous because it was very poisonous music, you know, like very, too electronic, so many beats, you know, 
I felt like as if I am eating a poisonous food. And my body reacted a lot too. I need, then I had to cleanse all these energies. Yeah. After. So really like, that was very intense experience for me. And then I say, yes, music, really, even when we are not aware of it, and many people are not aware of it, they really can alter your energy. They can really make you feel so down and poison you on energy level. So be careful what you listen to. Yeah. Or it, it can uplift you. For example, there are some uh, types of music in Middle East. It's called Arabesque, like very bitter, very like sad music, mm. you know. People listen to this music becomes always melancholic, sad. They want to drink alcohol and then they complain yes. about life, you know. Just about music, you know. M music makes you feel like that. Mm. But there is some kind of music like some nice bansuri there or like some sita or like some oud or some nay, you know, like then it touches your soul. And I can also share with you a very interesting experience from other side. Two years ago, I had been going through a process like I did a meditation called Mystic Rose from Osho. Mm. Uh, it was three week meditation. And at the end, I was listening to music and it was Sufi music from Turkey. It touched my heart so deeply, you know, all of a sudden I burst into tears and I was chopping onion and I really saw God in the onion. Can you believe it? Like I felt so much compassion towards onion and I start to cry again. And that also showed me the beauty of depth of music as well. Um, deeply it can touch you and how deeply it can uplift you and send you to different dimensions it can open your heart but it can also poison you so be careful what you listen to yeah. i say not this is why music is not entertaining like people think it's an entertaining no it's a food it's actually it's a energetical food we receive you know yes. a food for soul for heart for mind but we need to be very careful what kind of food we take true you know? Yeah, I see that as one of the parameters. If you really want to know what kind of a frequency a person is operating on, listen to their playlist, and you will know. <laughs> and you'll know you the frequency very, that uh, very, they are on, and where to go from there. You are very right. Like even as a musician, I can share my like evolution as a musician. Like what kind of music I was listening before now, what I'm listening. Like first, I was listening pop music, hip hop music. And so, and then I start to play, uh, re listen to rock music, metal music. Then I start to listen to electronic music and so on. And then at the end, I start to listen to folk music, mm -hmm. world music, you know, Middle Eastern, Indian, jazz, like much more this deep music, you know, it start to touch me. Like, it also shows me the, like how this awareness is evolving, you know, yeah. as you say, you know, what you listen to reflects what is inside like if you listen to pop music all your life for sure i don't want to generalize but it also reflects a bit like what kind of inner world you have within you but if you listen to let's say jazz music or like indian music middle eastern music like this classical music i mean not the popular one like then it also shows what kind of level you are evolving it's so much related, so much related, like classic music, like also the classic uh, music of Western music, you know, like it's also beautiful. I don't listen to it much, to be honest, but it's also beautiful. Like yeah. when you listen to it, there is a big difference between popular music, contemporary music and classic music for Western music as well, you know, like it also shows like where you come from, like your inner, inner state, inner mood, you know. Yeah. yeah, and I think the more the need to become cool nowadays uh, in the music space, the more derogatory our language is becoming. And mm. and when you see kids sing those songs, it's it's you really question where what's happening, what's going to happen, you know, if they keep growing up in this uh, space. Um, so yeah, I think this is a very important topic, and we should be doing more of these and um, getting more people who can spread awareness about how uh, 
the importance of music consumption. Yeah, music and consumption is an important thing, yeah. Like it's about really educating people. And when you say music consumption, I will come to a very interesting point as a musician. Music is one of the things in this life which is valued so minimum level. Like we value music so little. And and I don't know what else apart from music is valued on so minimum level, even though it, it should be on so high level. Because playing music, playing music, I mean like playing really like this heart touching music, soul touching music and when when you are so present and so on it's not easy thing it's a craft that you become after so many years of practice you know i always give this analogy of martial arts you do martial arts for 10 15 20 years then it can flow same with music and it is such a hard thing but we value it on so minimum level because we don't know the importance of music we are not educated about music but educating music, I don't mean learning music theory. Hmm. I mean uh, yes. being a good listener. You know, we we don't learn how to listen to music. Like in, I haven't learned in any music lesson, hmm. also from any teacher, how to listen to music. Nobody teaches you how to listen to music. But this is what I do in my uh, projects, in my classes. You know, first of all, I tell them you, you need to learn how to listen to rhythm. Like, you know, where is the first beat? Where is the pulse? What is the time? How is the syncopation? You know, so and then I'm going a bit more deep. It is the foundation. We need to teach kids how to listen to music, not the notation. Personally, as a musician, I am not very good at notation. I don't read notation. I understand after so many years, but I don't use it. And I think it is just optional. Like it is very good bonus if you know it. It helps a lot, and I think what, the more professional you get, the more you need it. But you don't need it at the beginning, and you don't need to be a professional musician. But you need to know how to listen to music. I think we need to change it. You know, in music education, wipe out all this music theory, but teach how to listen to music, how to understand melody, how to understand the pitch, which scale and then which rhythm and so on. And that will help in life. Because we are teaching skills with, which they will not use in life. Like I got music lessons and it was my worst subject in the school. <laughs> I didn't like them. I hated music lessons. To be honest, really, I hated them. Because it's so much theory, so much notation. I said, this is too much. You know, It's not for me. But if I had learned how to listen to music, how to understand pitch, beats, like what is behind, you know, it will be so interesting. And it would help in life as well. Then I will not, I wouldn't be anymore and enter, like I wouldn't use it for entertainment anymore. I would know the value of it. Because you learn the language, you know, it's like I am learning Sanskrit, you know, then I know what I say. If I don't know what I say, I am just like parroting, you know. But it's really about being conscious of what's happening there. And this is for the real music education we need to have. And I think this is also answer to your ultimate question about how to educate people, how to get people consciously into music. I think to change is music education. Yeah. And I also see like uh, from some musicians around, uh, there are two observations I have. First, the spiritual and musical worlds are so connected. Like when someone's go deeper in spiritual world, goes also deeper in musical world. And also when someone goes so deep in his musical world, they want to explore this different music. Like, for example, I know a guy, he studied at conservatory, you know, and now, and not now, like he's, then he started to learn flamenco, ragas, Indian music and so on. And now he enjoys it so much. And then I know another guy who is lecturing at conservatory too. So he was playing and still he plays like uh, Western percussion. But then he got into this world percussion like darbuka, frame drums, congas and so on, you know. And then the world is opening up. It's like 
the deeper they go in music journey, they realize they need to go to different directions like world music, like Indian music, Middle Eastern music, and so on. You know, and the same thing happens when someone is going deeper spiritually. They see, yeah, what I am at musically is limiting. You know? So then also like this sharing with audience happens naturally, you know, because we are connected. When I am so much connected to my music and then heart, you feel it, you know. Mm. There's no way that you, you don't feel it unless you are receptive. <laughs> so once you are receptive, you receive it and then you feel it. It's so simple. And this is why maybe people are attracted towards these authentic musicians, you know, when they play from their heart. Right. But there is also a wrong, uh, how can I say, assumption or maybe acceptance that people have sometimes. When I say playing from heart, usually people think like playing like uh, random, like many hippies, hmm. you know? I don't want to like uh, see anyone inferior. I also sometimes see myself as a hippie. But with hippie music, I mean much more like someone who doesn't know much about music, much more plays intuitively, but they don't know where they come from. They don't know where they go. They don't have this depth about music. You know? Because sometimes when I say like p feeling from playing from heart, they think this is the same thing. No, it's different. Playing from heart is like takes years, in my understanding. Yeah? Takes years. Like we, we need to first cultivate this uh, mastery about our, our instrument and music. Then it's like surrendering happens, you know? Because then it's like flow. Our hands are flowing, you know? Then when you play it, you can just totally surrender, you know? You can just let go, okay? I am the tool, play itself. And then it plays. But if I don't cultivate it, how will it happen? You know? And I will just make some rhythm speech, but it will be very limited. Like playing from heart is actually about mastery too, I would say. It's not just like, okay, I just let it go, just surrender and then it happens. <laughs> Sometimes like there is this understanding, you know. No, it is it takes years. It just you're not just stuck in your mind with the technical part of it. You know that you already know have the technique that you need and you don't yeah. have to bring them to the forefront while playing from your heart. The technique becomes so natural, you know. Yeah. It's like this cultivation of technique becomes so natural. You know, even in yoga, I heard sometimes stories like yogis are doing same asana for 50 years to master the same pos posture, you know, and also it, it applies to music, you know, we are doing all these technical practices every day, every day, every day, and then it becomes so natural and then we can just surrender. It happens. At ease, you know. Like music. It becomes so natural, and even like I watch a guy uh, on YouTube. He talks about effortless mastery. Mm -hmm. He talks about the same thing. He says like, when you practice, you need to focus. Yes, it's very fo like focus oriented thing, practice like exercising. You need to focus, be focused, concentrated. But he says, when you play, let it go, surrender. Mm -hmm. Just lose yourself. Don't think about the next step. Let the instrument play himself. And then this is effortless mastery, like the flow of state, you know, this playing from heart is what I mean. But behind it, there is mastery, you know, it takes yeah. dedication. The commitment. Because like in New Age world, I don't know in India, but they probably in India, maybe it's less because you are respecting music so much. Uh, in new, new Age world, there is this understanding. How you take an instrument, you play some chords, you play, take a drum, play some beats, and then you can just say, I play from my heart. Mm. <laughs> because you have good intentions. As a musician, I, I say, no, be careful <laughs> what they say, you know, uh, because it takes years. It's a mastery. Master behind. Wow. 
because it's like that you know like just because uh maybe a part of my hand is cut and i could just heal it i don't call myself i am a surgeon hmm. or like i got some sickness and i healed myself i don't call myself i am a doctor you know like in life everything takes time and that was also my uh kind of discussion with a friend uh, last year he plays flute and he called himself musician and i told him you can better say i play flute rather than saying i am a musician because to call yourself a musician is for me a very like how can i say challenging thing like it's not easy to call yourself as a musician it takes years you know how can you call yourself a musician just because because you play an instrument you mm. know musicianship is a different thing you know like and i realized this aspect after so many years and i was also the same person like this guy you know like i was calling myself musician i am musician i am musician but after going so deep into music i realized just now i start to become a musician <laughs> after so many years and getting into like this diving into this depth of music because it's so deep so infinite world and i was on so superficial level but because of this stupid mind mm. we call ourselves oh, i play music i am musician i dance i am dancer i am much more careful about these words you know it's like i went to a yoga retreat i am a yogi Hmm. or i did yoga training i am a yoga teacher that's a that's a need for labeling and putting ourselves in certain boxes you know, checking the box musician composer producer so checking the boxes yeah checking the boxes and it happens so much in western world you know i think it's like catching everything. on it's spreading like wildfire everywhere now um we are really uh, i mean you see uh, this happening on both sides the one side where uh, you know the superficiality is gaining a lot of momentum but at the same time you see the depth also coming up right they are all happening simultaneously in the same world here we are talking about uh, what sound healing is not whereas at the same time the same things are happening as what sounding healing is so yes. uh, yeah and that's Come what up. the beauty nice. that's what yeah. the beauty of uh, living in this world is that everybody has their own space for their own opinions and perspective and how they want to see the world and the reality they want to create uh, you know what my master says and it's also my experience i mm-hmm. can share it with you music is a very mystical uh, thing you know why like my master and also one of his students shared with me before and then i i experienced it when i got into this space you sit to practice for 1 hour is nice you are just warming up 2 hours 3 hours some different dimensions are happening up when you play 4 5 6 hours you know very mystical dimensions open up you know it's like how can i say it's very uh, i don't know the word for that very playful woman who is hiding playing hiding and seek mm. she doesn't want to show her face to someone easily because she wants that you put effort you know that you want her with she all your life she wants to see the integrity really like you are so much dedicated and committed to her you know then she opens uh, her face and she, like just hugs you music is like that you know like this is why i say practice dedication so important and then all these mysteries of music all this like deep dimensions maybe and also healing uh, dimensions of music come up yeah because then you are so uh, getting deeply connected to it because music is talking through you in that time you like music sees that you are right channel and can give you you know what is there and i can really observe it you know like I usually practice 1 hour a day. But there has been some days I practice 4 hours a day, 5 hours, 6 hours, 7 hours and sometimes like I get so deeply into that I feel like wow like this is mystical, very psychedelic. 
you know, like what is happening there, all this depth and all this joy, you know, and then naturally it becomes healing, you know, like for you, for others, and so on, because this dimension is opens up. You know? This is why I I am very cautious when people say I am musician, I am sound healer, like it is really something not easy to get there like you need to be dedicated all your life you need to practice all your life and then it happens to you you cannot be healer you know you cannot uh, be, be someone that creating healing through music or something like it happens you know it happens naturally if you are committed to it you know because it's something very pure this is what i can say but is there is there a point where you realize that you have you have tapped into that dimension where you can apart from healing yourself you can you are now able to spread that healing to others in some way even if you believe that you are not doing it how how do you how do you get to know that on a physical level that it's something uh -huh. that's happening that you open that portal Uh, I can share one experience. Uh, in 2017, I was initiated to Reiki. Mm -hmm. You know Reiki, right? Yes. And once I was initiated to the Reiki, I start to realize something start to change within me. The energy and so on. And then on my hands and so on. So, you know, I start to feel like this healing energy healing properties start to come but slowly and same year it was just my second year with Tijirudu I was in Thailand I was visiting a guy like a sound healer he had so many devices instruments there but he's very good guy like with pure heart and I can say like he was really in right space with pure energy with pure intention and there was a girl who needed healing and she was laying on the bed some people were doing reiki some people were doing other kind of thing and i was playing didgeridoo that was my first experience with sound healing you know i was playing didgeridoo and for 20 25 minutes and i really felt like she received it you like, felt that she received it like like from energetic yeah, yeah, I felt that she received it and I felt that I could give it, you know. It was a collective thing, not just me, like all the environment was that healing way. But that opened me up a new world, you know. That opened me up a new world, but that was just one experience. It didn't happen after uh, some time because I didn't play digital for a while or so. Then this, what I mentioned, this like rhythmical awakening, after that happened, mm. it was very obvious for me because it's very, it was very mystical thing. And then uh, with my drums, with my didgeridoo and so on, but it's also again like cultivating this energy. Like I start to run events just last year. I start to run this like music, live music, sound healing kind of events just last year. And I realized people receive it. You know, and I feel so sometimes. <laughs> How come I can heal people? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, because as I share with you, I don't see myself as a healer or something. You know? But does so, pride yeah. kick in at any point when you no. start experiencing? Because I don't see myself as a healer or as a guru or that's as what someone. keeps you grounded. <laughs> because I am nobody, you know, like. I am, I am, and if people ask me if they want to just label me, you know, I don't like labeling myself because I really feel like there is no identity here. But I say, if you want to label me, just call me a musician. Don't call me a healer. <laughs> I am just a musician. Let's see. Because it is my first top priority in life, you know, first focus my, like everything, my love, my meditation, my God, you know, music is everything for me. And when it's like that, healing is for me just part of it. 
because why should I have the pride, you know? And this is also like, I had this chat with some people. I don't like uh, to market and also sell the spiritual services, in my opinion. It's my opinion, you know? Like, I like much more like selling your craft, if you have a craft like dance, music, you know? If you have a craft like massage and so on, you know? It's good. But for me, you know, like to sell healing, I also offered it, you know, I also offered it sometimes to people like as a paid service, but so far I didn't, and I never get a client. <laughs> so maybe it shouldn't come. But in my opinion, it's much more like these things are natural. They are part of life. Like for me, they should be just a service from your heart. You know, uh, they are not a talent. They are not a skill for me. It's just like part of universe healing. You know, it just happens. It's very natural thing. It's like water, fire, air. It's just there. You know, it's a bit absurd for me to have to feel proud because of something natural. <laughs> it's very natural thing. You know, it's part of nature, like healing. Like our body heals himself herself all the time. Yes. You know, it's like part of nature. Like you say, ah, I can breath, breathe. I, I am so proud that I can breathe. <laughs> I, I can digest. Yeah. I feel so proud that I can. Healing is natural. Like, body is healing all the time. And why should I feel proud that that is happening through me? It's absurd. I can maybe feel proud that I can play good music. It's another thing because I put so much energy and effort. <laughs> but not through healing, no. Like, oh. yeah, it's natural. Yeah. Wow, this has been uh, really amazing. Um, we try to, in every episode, we try to give some kind of an exercise or tip to the people who have watched the episode. And so, with you, do you have anything to tell people who want to be more, say, receptive to sound or who want to, uh, you know, who have who face resistance but would like to have some kind of a practice where they can be more open to sound vibrations do you have any tips or exercise something that will help them in terms of healing right in terms of healing in terms of receptivity in terms of just being more um, allowing of uh, how they receive or how they perceive sound i can share for sound and then also for musical awareness in terms of sound what i would do focus on the heart focus on the heart and for sure thoughts will arise and they, it will continue just ignore just come back to heart all the time and also focus on sound like put your attention on your heart and on the sound and it's good for them to start with drone this is why i like did you do like did you do a drone or tem tempura like in indian music tempura right Sandra, you have this yes. tempura, yeah also with tempura they can do that you know because it has drone like continuous sound and it can be easy to focus on. It's like a journey. Mm. I would tell them, like, as if you jump into a train, jump into this sound, travel. But do it with drone. Because if you do it with rhythmical sound or like with some melody scales and so on, it can a bit kick off to mind. Mm. But if you do it with drone, it's much more meditative state. This is also one of the reasons I think why people play digital for something. Mm. This is for healing. Okay. For musical awareness, different. For musical awareness, I will say, like if they want to cultivate this musical understanding, it starts with rhythm. Mm. When they listen to a music piece, they need to pick an instrument. I would usually pick a drum or a bass instrument 
But I think, like, uh, you are in India, and you have probably subscribers from India. Uh, they can focus on drums because in India you have so beautiful drums. So they can just focus on these drums and focus mainly the bass of the uh, drum, like bass beats, you know, on tabla, like when they hit this bass. These ornaments, you can focus later. First, focus on the bass and then just follow it, follow it, follow it, you know. Then understand when it comes, how it comes. You will start to feel after a while when this beat comes, when this bass beat comes again and so on. And then you can jump to other one, like then they can start to focus on these subtle sounds, you know, like this tagging, tagging sounds, you know, on the right hand of tabla. Uh, then it can really create slowly this musical awareness. And if they have a little bit knowledge about melody, and for for example, now I am talking a bit theoretical because I am a drummer. I don't know about I don't know much about melody and so on. Just but I know the technique a little bit because it's very similar to rhythm. Again, focus on one instrument, focus on the pitch, how the pitch changes, coming down or going up, and again like realize how it's flowing, like, then they can maybe understand what kind of mood they are creating. And I think in Indian music, because in Middle Eastern music, like there are scales and scales are so much connected to feelings, emotions. Like if you wanna create certain emotion, you play certain scale. I think maybe in Indian music, the same ragas. I mean, like, yes. I, don't, I don't know much, you know better. So they can also be aware of it, like what kind of emotion they are creating within me. So they can be really then conscious what they listen and what is good for them too. <laughs> Maybe some kind of ragas are good in certain mood, but yes. not in some other mood, you know. This is really about creating this musical awareness. I think it's very important. Great. Superb. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing some of these beautiful stories with us today. Pleasure. And, um, such profound mystical experiences that you've had and you trusted us to open up and you know spread it with others and it's so beautiful to hear uh, everything that you're doing and the intention that you're coming from and the message that you're trying to um, spread and give into the world so it's been a real uh, real honor to have you today and um, I, I look forward to seeing everything that you're coming up with. And uh, thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. And I realized it was so good chat because you said 30, 40 minutes is one and a half. <laughs> <laughs>